Okay, so we've got another multiplicative function I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about the sigma. Oops, the sigma. F oh, start again. Okay, so last time we talked about multiplicative function, multiplicative functions. Just to remind you, m n greatest common divisor equals one implies that f of n, f of m equals f of n m. So f is multiplicative. Uh, f is multiplicative if this holds. And last time I pointed out that tor of n was multiplicative. Is multiplicative. Uh, what about sigma? Sigma of n. You'll remember that equals the sum of the divisors of n, and we had a nice little formula for this. If n equals p1 to the alpha 1, p2 to the alpha 2, do, 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 pi to the alpha i, actually we'll say pr to the alpha r, where the pi are distinct primes. Uh, the formula we had was sigma of n equals, see if I can get this right, it's p1 to the alpha 1 minus, sorry, plus 1 minus 1 over p1 minus 1 times p2 to the alpha 2 plus 1 minus 1 over p2 minus 1 times all the way up to the final one, which is pr to the alpha r. I keep on saying minus 1, plus 1, over pr minus 1. And by the same logic as last time, if n equals that and m, uh, so that's sigma of n, if I've got m uh, and I want m, I want m co-prime co-prime to n, so I want m n equals 1, then the prime factorization of m should be like this. It should be q1 to the beta 1, da 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 da, qs to the beta s. And by this exactly the same logic as last screencast, we can establish that sigma of m n equals, well, we'll just write it down, p1 to the uh, alpha 1 plus 1 minus 1 over p1 minus 1. All the way up to p, what was it, r, over p r minus 1 times, and now the q's, q1, oh no, it's a beta, q, no, minus 1, over q1 minus 1 times, all the way up to q, was it s, beta s, plus 1 minus 1, over q s minus 1, equals sigma of m, sigma of n. So that checks out and sigma is now a multiplicative function. That's great. So the sigma function function equals sum of divisors of n is multiplicative. And that's why you do it like this. You do you, you define the sigma function the way you do so that the function itself is multiplicative. So for example, if you're wondering why do you include uh, the number itself, why do you include n as a divisor of n when you're adding them all together? Uh, well, the answer is because the function that you get is multiplicative. And I'm going to stop there.